Hey guys, Wayback Rewind here. Today I'm going to be looking at one of the ways to convert analog video into digital video. There are many different ways to do it. I'm going to focus on one method in this video. I will make subsequent chapters on different ways to do it. But today I'm going to focus on one method and it's probably the easiest method that you can possibly use. And that is using a VHS to DVD recorder. Okay, so let's get started. If you have a VHS or a compact VHS video from the early 90s, this is gonna be the super easiest way for you to do this. One of the cameras I bought came with a video from 1990. Someone had recorded the Goodwill Games. This is going to be super easy to convert using this machine. So I'm gonna start with this tape on this compact VHS, but it's gonna look exactly the same for VHS. If you had a camcorder in the late 80s to early 90s, you probably shot on VHS. I'm gonna use this Magnavox that has the VHS on one side and the DVD recorder on the other. I'll put in the description what type of machine this is and where you can find it. These machines are no longer sold new. If you happen to have one in your house, it may or may not work. I had three of these that I bought brand new and none of them work at this point. So I bought this machine off eBay. You can still find them at a reasonable price working. So let's get started. With compact VHS, first thing you have to do is put it into the adapter. The adapter makes it possible for you to put this into a machine and have it play just like a normal VHS tape. So to convert this analog video into DVD, the, the easiest way to, is using this machine. This one records a DVD plus R. I'm not really sure what the difference is between the plus R and the dash R. And I don't even know if it makes any difference at this point. Newer machines will generally, computers will play both. So you put the disc into the DVD recorder. It will show loading. And then when it's ready, it will show you how much recording time you have based on the mode that you're set to. After the disc is finished loading, then you just set the record mode. And as you know from Wayback Rewind, we always record in the highest quality mode possible. On this particular disc, that would be the HQ mode for one hour. If you want to do dubbing from the tape to the DVD recorder, it could not be any easier. You literally just press one button. Okay, once I'm finished dubbing, I just hit stop and it's going to close out that file. It says writing to disk, but it doesn't actually store all of that information. And it's, it's just writing the directories, instructing the disk how to be able to find those files when you put it into a, a player. And now it's ready to do whatever I need to do. It put a directory on there for that first file that I created. I recorded for four minutes and seven seconds, just as an example. And it shows the rest of it as remaining empty. This disc is not finalized at this point. So before you can play this in a normal DVD player, you normally have to finalize it. It closes out the disc. But for now, this is where we're gonna leave it. Even without finalizing it, I can come in here and press play. What I just recorded is now on the DVD. Okay, so you might be thinking, what if I don't have compact VHS? You're thinking, what if I have eight millimeter or high eight? Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. It's pretty much the same process. There are other ways to do this, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with the DVD recorder. To copy analog into the DVD recorder, I'm just gonna use this dubbing cable. The dubbing cable has your typical left, right, and video on this side and has the sub mini plug on this side it goes into the machine so the sub mini plug just goes in here like that
and your yellow, white, and red go in just like that. So I'm gonna adjust the input on the DVD player to go to front. So now when I press play on my camcorder that I just connected, I should see the input to the camcorder. So when I'm using the front panel inputs, I can't press dubbing. Dubbing is just for the internal VHS to the DVD recorder. So it's very simple. I just press record and it's gonna record from whatever is coming in that front input. I press play on my camcorder. And I've got some video coming in from June of 1992 that I shot of the STS-50 launch. And zero and liftoff. I recorded this from inside my office building, sitting at my desk. I was too lazy to go outside and, and shoot this. So when you're done, all you have to do is hit stop. It's gonna say writing to disc, just like before. I'm gonna stop the tape. It says writing to disc. It's really just creating a directory on how to find that clip. doesn't take that long and when it's done I should have a short index of the two clips that I just made that second one is showing blank because it took me a few seconds before I started the tape but anyway you get the idea I've got two clips here I can press play and I can immediately watch that on the DVD make sure that it actually recorded and it recorded Now, if all I want is to put this on DVD, I'm completely done at this point. If I want to put it into the computer, there's one extra step, but it's actually very simple. If this were a rewritable disc, you could play it in the computer without finalizing it. But the dash R's and the, and the plus R's, you have to finalize them before you can see them even on a computer. So I'm going to show you real quick what finalization looks like. Normally, you wouldn't want to do that if you've only recorded like five minutes out of the possible one hour, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that just so you can see how it works. So what you do is you press setup on the remote. It gives you some options. You're gonna go down to disk edit. Under disk edit, one of your choices is finalize. You're gonna to wanna to do that and say, okay. Do you really wanna do this? Yes, and you say, okay. So now it's finalizing. Interestingly, before DVDs, I don't think finalizing was an actual English word. I think the DVD invented that word to describe this process. Another interesting note, the less there is on the disc, the longer the finalization process takes. So this disc with only five minutes recorded is actually gonna take a bit of time. Now the process is complete. I should be able to play this disc in any normal DVD player and computer DVD players. So if you don't have a DVD player on your machine and the one I use for editing does not, any machine made in the last few years probably does not have an optical drive. You can buy these. I'll put in the description the one that I bought. I'm not getting kickbacks from Amazon, so I'll just do it as a favor. You put that in there like that. And just like that, the DVD that I recorded is now on the computer. It opens up just like any commercial DVD. I can play it using whatever player is installed on your computer. What makes the computer interesting is that not only can I play it like a normal DVD, but I can come in here and open up the files and access them directly. Now they're gonna show up in these weird .vob files, but .vob is really just MPEG. That .vob file is gonna play just like a normal MPEG-2 file on your computer, and you can drag and drop that into your favorite editing program. It's a fully digital file now that you can do whatever you need to do with it.
And that's basically it. If you want to convert a file to digital, the DVD recorder is a really simple one button push solution. I highly recommend that for simplicity. There are other ways to convert analog to digital and I'll go into those in other videos, but this is certainly one easy way to do it. And as always, like or subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching. Uh, it's somewhere up there.